So I've played Power World a ton now. I've had early access for almost a week and today guys I share with you things I indeed wish I knew before playing. How's it going guys? My name's DPG and if you do enjoy the video leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe. Also guys, if you want to join my Power World community, want to find players to play with, group up, chat about the game, share your powers, your levels, your secrets, join my Discord linked down below. Okay, so after pouring hours into Power World, I have made many mistakes, overlooked certain things and sometimes just made life a lot harder on myself. In this video, I bring you things I wish I knew earlier, tips and tricks to help new players and methods for indeed to make life easier on new players coming into the game. So let's go. So before you even create that new world and load it up, you can guys create your custom world settings which drastically change the way the game plays for you. Me personally, I stuck with that normal difficulty, but you can customize everything from your carry weight, damage output, farming and crafting efficiency, what happens to your gear upon dying and so much more. Now what I would say is be careful with some of the settings you may pick here, they can make the game just so so, just, just stupid easy, too easy. But what you can do is if you select something in these settings that you don't like, you can back out to main menu and set it to something else. So keep that in mind. But yes, guys, you can truly optimize the way this game plays for you, making it super, super easy, making you being able to tame everything straight up or making the game super, super hard. Again, me personally, I stuck to normal, but I should have probably having uh, early access changed my difficulty settings a bit to make the game a little easier on myself. Plus the fact I'm playing in my own world now, solo, I mean, who cares what I do with my settings? You also guys, once you've created that character, you cannot go back and edit it. So make sure you pick a design you're happy to stick with. Now upon you first loading into the game, there will be tutorials uh, the game asks you to do. Ignore the tutorials for the time being upon you first loading in and go and get yourself a Cattiva Pal. These are very handy little fellas who in my opinion are the best first pals you can indeed catch. They will help you speed up the whole tutorial process and assist you in farming materials, crafting items and much much more. As I said, the perfect first companion you can catch straight away off the bat. So from where you spawn into the game initially, all you want to do guys is turn back on yourself and follow where I go on screen now. Now I'm speeding up the video because I'm looting chests here just to get a sphere. These are this game's Pokeball. As soon as I have that sphere, I'm simply just looking now for them pink cats. Those pink cats are the cat -tivas. Once you find one guys and they're all over the first couple areas, you want to take them down to a low half, throw that sphere at them and catch this little bad boy and you are good. From this point, once you have that Cattiva, just do as the game asks and just complete a few of these tutorial missions. First up, you want to craft that workstation. You then, guys, want to create yourself a PAL box. Now, the PAL box and where you put this thing, guys, will determine your first base. In my opinion, the best place to create your first base is just down to the right of the first fast travel point you will come to straight up. This little area here is filled with rocks, trees, bushes, a nice flat land for you to create this base at and it's a great great spot, an easy spot for you to work out the basics of crafting and building in Power World. Now once you have that power box down, you now want to set the Cattiva as your base pal. What this means is guys, he will farm for you while you're out in the open world. Just make sure if you do leave him here that you create a storage box as well as a bed for the little fella as well as a feed box. All of these open up relatively in the first few levels. Now you can build your base wherever you like as when you place that pal box down like I said it determines your home base because a certain area around that pal box and where you put it will count as your base's vicinity. So where you do this guys if you don't go over the, uh, the place I suggest you want to make sure there's certain farmable materials in your base's vicinity especially with your first time base here. Now you will be able to create multiple bases but that won't come until you get your base, your initial base to a level 10 so do not worry about this as you first start playing. 
Now, dismantling your power box, you won't lose your powers, but your surrounding base will crumble. So when you make that base, be very careful where you place that power box. Your power box also acts as a fast travel point too, so you can theoretically build your base anywhere and get to any area where you've activated a fast travel relatively quickly. Now the most important things to first craft on that workbench in my opinion are a torch, a pickaxe, a axe, a bow and arrow, and when you unlock it, the shield and armor. Also spheres too, although you will find loads of these across the open world, just lying around on the floor, as well as in chests. So the torch is very useful at night for keeping you warm and allowing you to see. The pickaxe and axe just make farming much, much easier early on. The bow and arrow just make for farming or capturing powers a lot easier, taking the health down. And armor is armor, and the shield early on is a defo game changer. So grab these while you can. Now also guys, materials will spawn over time, so if you build your base next to a farmable items, you can farm them indefinitely, so do keep that in mind. Now if you die in the open world, your bag will drop with all your contents. I haven't risked dying twice to even test this uh, before trying to retrieve it the first time I've died, but I would expect you lose your gear. I learned this kind of the hard way, trying to push on early uh, and just trying to face enemies that were just too strong for me. It was also stated by multiple sources before this game's release that if your power gets knocked out in battle or dies, it's gone for good. This definitely isn't the case. You can place them in that power box back at your base and they'll recover after about 10 minutes. Also, when you are in battle and have multiple powers on you, recover them before they die and they will regen health. So throw one out, let them do what they're gonna do. If you're noticing they're dying pretty quickly, retrieve them, throw another one out, and that one you just retrieved will recover. Also guys, don't make the mistake I made in trying to tame much, much higher level powers than I was. Uh, it's kind of pointless starting an encounter with one because they just almost one tap you and they normally don't give anything extra upon you taking them out. So if you even try and fight one to kill a much higher enemy, you don't gain, you may gain a few more experience points, but at the end of the day, you're going to be there way, way longer trying to take them out. You're just going to waste your materials in trying to actually just take them down. And even trying to catch them uh, early on, it's just the percentage bar is so low when their level is above you. Even if you've got better spheres and you've got effigies spent into capturing higher tames, I mean, it's still a much, much harder thing to do. So keep that in mind. Also, throwing spheres, whether you hit a pal or not, you lose it. So if you accidentally chuck one, it's gone for good. You can also, guys, when it comes to chucking that sphere, use your left trigger to auto-aim and semi-lock on. This also will work with weapons too. Now, poison arrows do make getting those harder powers a little easier. If you read the description of what poison arrows with that bow do, it does indeed allow you to have a little bit more of a percentage of catching that said certain pal. So keep that in mind when it comes to you trying to find and catch that certain high-leveled pal. Effigies at night time are much much easier to spot. What effigies are, are they're basically what you use at the Statue of Power, which we'll talk about in a quick second, to upgrade yourself in regards to allowing you to catch bigger and better pals. You use these effigies at the, the Statue of Power, which you unlock at a level 6, which you will place at your base. Now these effigies are those glowing green statues you can see in certain parts of the map, where at night time, guys, you can see these in abundance out in the open world so yes if you need to do this do what you gotta do at night time it makes things a lot easier now in regards to the statue of power it's also we can level up those powers too uh, in doing this guys you need those power souls now there are also skill trees so to speak there are trees out in the open world which you can pick the skill fruits from these you can apply to your certain powers uh, and increase their abilities their powers will also gain abilities upon leveling them up too now straight off the bat I have tamed and used plenty of pals within this open world mainly for base purposes but when it comes to battling other pals just running around leveling up and farming other pals for their specific materials a couple do come to mind but my very 
favourite and the best in my opinion for new players is definitely the Sparky. This is a great early game powerful ally. Now the Sparky is basically this game's Pikachu, it's a little yellow furry electric type pal and it can be found in these areas of the map, you'll see in this through my um, power decks uh, when you actually catch a tame, when you catch a pal uh, you can actually then see where they will spawn in in that open world so specific areas have chances of these to spawn in in said areas so yes guys the spark is a real easy power to actually get it's just finding them but once you do find them you level these little bad boys up and they are super super powerful fighting at your side so again and more about that power deck um, once you tame a certain creature you can use the power deck to find out more details on said little pal what they do what they offer base wise on the battlefield and much much more as well as the habitats where you will find them. Now looking within that power deck and looking at certain little pals, you will notice that they have a work suitability. This is what they offer in regards to your base, in regards to crafting, looting, farming, you name it. Now there is a few work traits and finding an individual pal which has points into all of them, I think is impossible. But all pals will offer something in regards to your base building. So what we have here is we have kindling, this means uh, that pal with said trait will help in regards to anything that requires heat, torches, lamps, campfires, stoves, you name it. Planting is a pal trait which will plant seeds within your seed beds uh, at your base to grow your own crops. Handiwork is a great trait which um, basically allows them to help you craft certain things which will take ages to do so. So if you're building a certain item and it takes you over a minute to actually build this item, uh, anyone with this trait can help you out uh, and it will just reduce the time by half. Lumbering means the obvious in collecting that wood for you. Medicine production means they produce a very important medicines which will help you uh, in the many predicaments you will find yourself in. Transporting is a trait where a power will pick up and collect items that you drop in regards to you being overweight and having to drop things. They will also transport it to any nearby storage containers. Watering is something that, uh, well basically, uh, a trait where if something needs watering or something requires water in any way, these are the powers for that. I mean, the one instance I was using these for were to water my seeds that I had planted, so yeah. Then we have generating electricity, this is what it states on the box. Craftable items which require power, require powers to make them work. Gathering is a trait where a power will collect berries from nearby bushes and store said berries in a feeding box to all to eat from. Mining is a trait where powers will farm rocks for you, getting you stone, or and many other things. We then have cooling is exactly what it suggests. It helps with later on items in a game like fridges. And then we have farming guys, which again is what it suggests. So pretty cool. Now you will have powers working at your base that do multiple things. But if you want a certain power to work on a certain thing, you can go ahead and pick that power up, throw it at that certain thing you want it to do, and it should indeed start doing it for you. Another thing I clocked onto also is there's plenty of NPCs you'll find out in the open world. 95% of the ones I've encountered are friendly, but if you attack them people, they call for backup and backup arrives. Now, if that backup gets the better of you and you die upon you spawning back in, the NPC seemingly forgets this ever happened. You can also, guys, pull up your minimap and place markers down, I believe up to 99 of these. So if you find a certain spot you want to come back to in the future, you can use this option and come back here, yeah, pretty cool. Okay, so lastly guys, we're going to talk about leveling up. Now, early game, once you level up, I mean, I did this and I wasted many points in things I just didn't need. Now, initially, what I'll do is I'll level up stamina, uh, weight, obviously, and that work speed. Stamina is important as it allows you to not only swing and hit things for a longer period of time, it also allows you to climb for longer, run for longer, so it's definitely one to think about. Carry weight is just what it is. I mean, if you want to carry more items, this is definitely one you should be putting points into. And then we have work speed or craft speed. Now, this is, I wouldn't say it's majorly important, but it will speed up a very, very slow process. I mean, crafting certain items in this game can take over a minute and a half. So leveling into this will just reduce that down drastically. So yes, do what you gotta do, guys. So there we do indeed have it, guys. Now, like I said, I've spent many, many hours playing this game. These are just a few of the things I can think of off the top of my head that I do wish I knew 
sooner. The other things you will have to discover for yourself if you find anything else out, which is very, very helpful. Do let everybody else know down below in that comments section. But there we have it, guys. Things I wish I knew sooner playing Power World. Guys, if you did enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully, guys, I will see you on that next one.